Morena. Morena, everyone. My name is Dr. Diana Kopua. I'm a, an independent psychiatrist coming to you from Tūranganui Akiwa. I'm a fellow of the College, the Royal College of Australia and New Zealand, the Australia New Zealand College of Psychiatry. And uh, for a little while now, I've been um, doing some readings for um, for you. This is the book. Dr. Joanna Moncrief is a, a UK-based psychiatrist uh, talking to you about psychiatric drugs, the truth about how they work and how to come off them. It's a big day for us today. And um, so I'm going to do a quick reading about the newer antipsychotics and the effects on symptoms. And then um, I'll come in again tomorrow and take a little bit more time. It's our first intensive day of our Rangi Parauri training. If you're interested in any of our training, go on to our website, mahiaatua.com. Right, newer antipsychotics. Some of the newer antipsychotic drugs, such as risperidone and amisulpiride, appear to work in much the same way as the older ones and have significant antidopaminergic effects. Risperidone, for example, causes overt Parkinson's symptoms at moderate to high doses. However, olanzapine and clozapine appear to induce Parkinson's disease type symptoms only at much higher doses. This suggests that their antidopamine effects are weaker and that their therapeutic effects may be related to their actions on other neurotransmitters, including noradrenaline, serotonin and histamine. At lower doses, they have strong sedative effects and can reduce the intensity of psychotic symptoms such as delusions and hallucinations. They dampen down emotional responses and reduce motivation and initiative, but in a subtly different way from drugs like haloperidol, whose principal action is opposing dopamine activity. People taking clozapine in particular often appear calmer and more placid than before, report improvements in sleep and anxiety and are less troubled by their inner thoughts. These effects may be related to these drugs' ability to cause metabolic disruption and substantial weight gain. Quetiapine has sedative effects and, like clozapine, has relatively weak dopamine blocking properties However, it does not produce the degree of weight gain or metabolic disruption associated with clozapine. Aripiprazole, which was introduced in 2002, is referred to as a dopamine partial agonist, which means it partially stimulates the dopamine receptors and increases dopamine activity, but also partially blocks them, thus reducing their activity. However, it's not clear how this translate in, translates into psychological and behavioural effects. From clinical experience and randomised trials, it appears that it may be less effective at suppressing severe psychotic symptoms and disturbed behaviour some, uh, than some other antipsychotics. So the next part is on effects on symptoms. And aloha mai if I'm going too fast or you, this is the first time you've joined, uh, please feel free to go through our page and, and start from the beginning. Uh, we're reading this book and we are up to chapter four. Effects on symptoms. A drug-centered account of the action on antipsychotics suggests that it is the mental and behavioral restriction they produce <clears throat> that is responsible for their apparently useful effects in psychosis and other psychiatric disorders. All antipsychotics reduce arousal and those with dopamine blocking actions inhibit physical activity. This is why they are used to manage challenging or aggressive behavior. They also make people sleep more than usual, which may be helpful to someone with severe insomnia. Their antipsychotic effect is probably achieved by their ability to suppress all mental activity which helps to reduce the intensity of abnormal thoughts and experiences such as delusions and hallucinations. 
The emotion dampening effects make people less distressed by their symptoms, as noted by psychiatrists in the mid 20th century, who commented on how the early antipsychotics caused people to lose interest in their psychotic symptoms, even though the symptoms often remain present to some degree. In this way, antipsychotics can be useful for the treatment of acute psychotic symptoms or positive symptoms of schizophrenia. There is no evidence, however, that they are selective for symptoms or for any abnormal thoughts or experiences. Accounts by people who have taken these drugs, alongside the evidence from animal and volunteer studies, indicate they are, that they affect all mental processes and not just those that are classified as symptoms. It is also agreed that antipsychotics are not generally helpful for negative symptoms of schizophrenia. Indeed, the disturbances that are classified as negative symptoms can also occur as a consequence of taking antipsychotic drugs, and it can be difficult to disentangle whether someone is suffering from drug-induced deactivation or underlying negative symptoms. Studies show that negative symptoms sometimes improve when antipsychotics are reduced. However, some people with positive symptoms, psychotic symptoms, may exhibit negative symptoms as a result of being so preoccupied with their internal mental experiences that they withdraw from social interaction and become uncommunicative and physically inactive. For people who are in this state, antipsychotics may be able to improve the negative symptoms by suppressing the positive symptoms. In other words, by reducing the individual's preoccupation with their psychotic thoughts, the general suppressant effects induced by antipsychotics may in turn increase their ability to be active in the world and interact with other people. However, it is difficult to see how the more long-term defects in motivation observed in some people with a diagnosis of schizophrenia could be helped by deactivating drugs. A small number of randomized control trials that antipsychotic uh, that show antipsychotic drugs are more effective than a placebo in reducing the general level of disturbance and psychotic symptoms such as delusions and hallucinations in people experiencing an antipsychotic episode like the NICE um, has shown that. However, whether antipsychotics are superior to other sorts of sedative drugs in these respects is less certain. A review of studies comparing benzodiazepine drugs with various antipsychotics produced no clear answer. Three of the studies in the review found Morena, the antipsychotic was superior, three that the benzodiazepine were superior, and one was inconclusive. Moreover, some of the studies demonstrated that, like antipsychotics, benzodiazepines reduced psychotic symptoms. In contrast, studies that compared early antipsychotics with barbiturates, another type of sedative drug, found that the antipsychotics were superior. From a drug-centered perspective, we might expect antipsychotics to be superior to some other sedatives because of the characteristic nature of the sedation that they produce. Typically, this involves emotional detachment or indifference. In contrast, drugs like alcohol Benzodiazepines and barbiturates partic participate exaggerated and labile or changeable emotions. Therefore, the altered state induced by antipsychotics may be more effective in reducing the emotional distress and preoccupation that is a feature of psychosis than the sedation produced by some other sorts of sedatives. The comparative studies are all decades old, however, and we need further research comparing the pros and cons of antipsychotics and other sedative agents. So um, if you have only just tuned in, uh, chapter four does explain positive and negative symptoms. The negative symptoms is like reduced speech, reduced motivation, social withdrawal, blunted emotions. And uh, so that's what they're talking about there. And whether the drugs do that or not, or sedate the person so much that they go into the internal world and focus on them and don't actually um, communicate with you. So the, 
there's no clear answer in what Joanne is saying is that we need more research. If you have a whānau who is um, engaged or taking medication, this information is really important. Uh, I am a bit rushed. Aroha mai. I'll be, I'll be a bit slower tomorrow. But have a great day. Take care. Hooray.